Hello everybody, this is the BG and today we're going to talk about how to make gluten-free, dairy-free waffles. If you're here because you have dietary restrictions like I do, then welcome, because I am happy to be able to share the fruits of my labor over the last six years on learning how to make the perfect gluten-free, dairy-free waffle. Like I alluded to in our earlier gluten-free, dairy-free pancakes video, I don't usually use a pre-made gluten-free flour blend. This is because a waffle requires a different ratio of ingredients than something like a pancake or a biscuit does. And although this recipe looks similar to the gluten-free pancakes recipe, the main difference is how the flour blend is put together. What makes for a perfect waffle is making sure that one third of the dry ingredients are made out of a starch like arrowroot starch, and then one third are made out of a nut flour like almond meal. Combining these two ingredients together creates a crisp outside with a light and airy inside. Let's go over the equipment that you'll need to make these waffles. So first, obviously, you'll need a waffle iron. I know you're probably looking at this and you're thinking, guys, guys, this is overkill. But listen, it really is not. We went through four waffle irons before we arrived at this monster, but this one is a keeper. Stainless steel parts are key. You can find buying links in the description of this video. Beyond that, you'll need what you see here, a mixing bowl, a rubber spatula, a whisk, a ladle, measuring cups and spoons, a fork and knife for removing the waffles from the iron and then cutting them apart, and a wire rack and a jelly roll pan for cooling. For ingredients, you'll need what you see here. Wet ingredients include eggs, oil, and soy milk, although you can also use almond milk. Dry ingredients include rice flour, arrowroot powder, almond flour, sorghum flour, dark brown sugar, baking powder, and salt. Also, we're showing you olive oil spray, which we will use on the waffle iron. And here's the recipe that we're using for these waffles. If you watched our GFDF pancake video, you'll see that there are strong similarities between these recipes. You can also get a copy of this recipe at our website, ourfinalfreezer.com. The first step is to put the batter together. For this, we're going to be adding three eggs to a bowl, then three tablespoons of oil, one and a half cups of soy milk or almond milk, three tablespoons of dark brown sugar, one quarter cup of sorghum flour, one quarter cup of rice flour, one half cup of arrowroot powder, one half cup of almond flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of xanthan gum, and then two tablespoons of baking powder. Since gluten-free batters require more baking powder to get the same amount of lift than their glutinous cousins do, make sure that you're using a aluminum-free baking powder here. If you do not, this recipe will taste metallic. With all the ingredients in the bowl, now it's time to start whisking. The main difference between whisking or mixing a gluten-free batter versus a glutinous batter is that you don't need to worry about overmixing. It's actually beneficial to mix the holy hell out of this batter compared to a, the glutinous version of a waffle. Just go to town on it. After the batter has been mixed, here comes the most important step of this recipe. Let the batter rest for 20 minutes before you do anything with it. The best thing to do in this 20 minutes is actually to turn on the waffle maker to get it started heating up, but do not use the batter yet. Gluten-free batters require a resting time period to allow whatever the liquid you're using, soy milk or almond milk, to actually get absorbed into all the gluten-free flour blend. Now that the batter is rested, you can actually see when I mix it, it has thickened up. It's a bit puffier. This is perfect to start with. The next step is to oil the waffle maker. This is something you're going to do for every single waffle. It's not something you do the first time. It's something you do every time for every waffle. With the iron oiled and up to temperature, the next step is to ladle in the batter. For my waffle maker, it takes a little bit more than one ladle. And in this case, the one that I'm using is about a one cup ladle. What you're looking for is to just be able to barely cover the bottom iron. If you you add any more than that you are going to just it's going to start exploding out the sides of the waffle maker after you close it it is better to add too little batter than too much batter the other problem with adding too much batter other than it coming out the sides is that it actually makes the waffle denser and heavier now with the waffle cooking we can talk a little bit about what the time and temperature ranges are for a waffle iron the waffle iron that i'm using here is a commercial one and you can actually adjust the timer and the temperature setting on it so for me this one is set at 4 minutes and 15 seconds, and the plates are at a temperature of 400 degrees. If yours doesn't have the ability to adjust temperature on it, you can certainly adjust the time period that you're 
cooking the waffle for. The main thing you're looking for is when it stops bleeding steam out the sides of the waffle maker. You can actually hear it hissing. That's what the steam, that's the sound of the steam as it's coming out of the sides of the waffle. Once that's over, that's generally a good sign that the waffle is done cooking. Depending upon the waffle maker you're using, it's gonna take three, four, five minutes. The best thing to do is set a timer, see how cooked the waffle is, you know, when the timer goes off and then make adjustments to the timer. You are gonna dial in your specific waffle maker to get the timer right on it. If I'm happy with how the waffle looks when the timer goes off, I'm just gonna take a fork just to loosely pry it out of there. Just be careful at this step. With it out of the waffle iron, just put it on a cookie cooling rack on top of a cookie sheet and then just leave it off to the side until you're finished with all the waffles. The batter that I'm making today will be able to make five of these Belgian style waffles. If your waffle maker is thinner than this one, it's obviously going to be able to make more than five, but that's just something that you can actually adjust for that batter for your specific waffle maker. With all the waffles completed, the next step is to actually cut them apart. My specific waffle maker has indentations to actually cut each waffle into four pieces, and it's a little bit easier to actually cut them when they cool down a little bit. They're crisper as time goes on. So for this, I just have a small serrated knife, split these into four pieces, and rack them up. If you're gonna make more than one batch of this recipe, make sure that you start an oven at the same time that you start the waffle maker at its lowest setting, so that as you start making waffles, you can stash them in the oven so they stay warm and crispy over time. So there you go. The best gluten-free, dairy-free waffle that I can muster. I'm still climbing the mountain to make the best gluten-free, dairy-free biscuit. The most elusive of the gluten-free, dairy-free breakfast items. All the recipes that I found online for gluten-free biscuits just have not delivered. It's so easy to make an amazing regular biscuit. I'm still searching for that perfect gluten-free biscuit. So when I find it, I'll make sure to put a recipe and a video out for that as well. But for this, enjoy my waffle magnum opus. Have it with some blueberries and whipped cream, dairy-free whipped cream, little maple syrup, butter, whatever you want, raspberries, strawberries, go to town. This is the BG Keeping It Square. See you guys next month. Thanks for joining us today and welcome new subscribers. So very glad that you're here. In our next episode, we'll make something that's anything but gluten and dairy-free. It's our recipe and technique for making French toast brioche style. It took us seven years to perfect. You'll see why. Subscribe to us, check out our website, and we'll see you next time on our final freezer. Why did the pig do karate? Why? Because it was a pork shop. Oh. <laughs>